You know, we never do vocal warm-ups before these. Me, 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 me. I'm a bitch. You are. I agree. All right, what's your vocal warm-up? Uh, I, I prefer to go with the speaking one, so the big black bear bit the big... Nope, that's even wrong. The big black bug bit the big black bear, and the big black bear bled blood. I think you fucked that up a little bit. It's it's a tongue twister, and I already struggle with the B sound. Buh. Buh. Itch. A butt itch. A, a butt itch. A butt will. itch. A butt itch. Very good. Does your butt itch? Constantly. Oh. It's in a constant state of itching. Might need some cream for that. I mean, it's just... I got a big butt. Got a large... Not need a lot of cream, then. Got a large posterior. A uh, surface area. Say, as they say. I have been... Man, my butt does some weird shit sometimes, man. I don't know. It's 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 both large and also exceptionally bony at the same time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like Got I'm always needing I'm always bones. needing a cushion under under my buttocks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is the Duels and Men and Dorks podcast, D and D and MTG podcast. I'm Connor and I'm Sam. And we are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. Yeah. 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 And this week's this week's episode is particularly juicy as it's sponsored and then also sponsored by streamer socks uh streamer socks uh the internet's fucking creepy and weird so streamer socks cover your feet so that your little toesies aren't put on camera ever and then sold online to creepy internet people streamer socks buy them now at streamer socks dot uh, bit slash io forward slash colon the dungeon bros music music dot ly music dot ly uh, for your own streamer socks, socks specifically designed for streamers to cover up their little toesies. Yep, uh, new new lineup this this fall this winter of uh, socks that make your feet look like uh, peg legs. Mm-hmm. 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 Very piratey to go with the recent release of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Yeah, yeah, they actually had a partnership with Wizards for the Lord of the Rings. They did little hobby feet, Hobbit feet ones where mm-hmm. they took actual human hair and they like sewed it into the fabric so that you had like little hairy feet. Yep. Little fake hairy feet, little toesies, little big old. They even they even padded the bottom so that you couldn't be heard walking around. Yeah, they even added individual toe slots mm-hmm. in in the sock, like psychopaths use. And then they glued on toenails. Yeah, big old dirty Re- toenails, real human toenails that they harvested from cadavers. Yes, so but they- only the only the biggest foot footed cadavers. Yes, of course, of course, of course. They don't they don't want no they don't want no small cadavers. No, no petite toenails no, from cadavers no, not at all not at all so thank you streamer socks for sponsoring this episode of the duels and man dorks podcast um i'm not gonna run into the real sponsor right now just because i feel like that's rude <laughs> i think we should run right into the real <laughs> sponsor <laughs> you, get, you gotta do all your ad reads at once fuck what do you think what's going on how's it going sam oh you know it's about thanksgiving here mm-hmm. if you're in the america if you're in america you know the united states it uh, is we are we're recording this on the 21st and the 23rd is the the day that we give thanks mm-hmm. and by that we mean eat mashed potatoes and turkey mm-hmm. i'm more of a okay thanksgiving foods yes thanksgiving foods what are what are the what are the highs what are the lows um well personally i absolutely abhor we're gonna start with the lows i abhor green beans yeah, we've been over this. Every format of green beans. The green bean casserole is phenomenal. It's disgusting. It's, it was um, going to be one of the things that I said as my tops. Um, and uh, secondly, I'm not a big fan of uh, the sweet potato or the yam. Mm, yeah. It just doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't need to be on the dinner plate. Most of the times that it's presented, it's presented vaguely dessert-like. but With at, the marshmallows and the yeah, brown sugar. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not into that. I'm no. not into that. Obviously, the taters. Love the taters. You gotta love the taters. Love a good roll. Oh yeah, um, bread. Big fan of bread. Honestly, and this might this might this might stir the pot a little bit. I would rather have chicken than turkey. Yeah, yeah. Turkey is so often cooked badly, which is because it's such a big bird. But people are trying to treat it like a little bird. Well, it's it's also not hard. Is the thing. It just takes time. It does. That's all. Like you don't need. Like it's not a difficult process. I'm sorry. Also, roasting a turkey is just kind of boring yeah like a smoked turkey my parents have done smoked turkey mm-hmm. in the past that's much better we've smoked we've smoked a turkey in the past the deep fried turkey it was fine deep fried again is one of those hard ones because it's like it's such a big thing and you're trying to yeah um though my uncle has that's where we go for thanksgiving uh he has started becoming competitive uh with his thanksgiving meals 
Not because the family is doing something interesting, because his neighbor started serving prime rib last Thanksgiving. Mm. Now he is also serving prime rib at Thanksgiving. That's good. I'm it is. I'm a big fan of this competition. In my his my father has recently gone to the route of the well. He's got the smoker. Loves the smoker. Love the smoker. So we obviously do the smoked turkey. He also has been adding the smoked ham. As an option, mm. in addition to the smoked turkey, which I'm a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of like the like a big hunk of ham, just carving a piece of that. I don't mind like a a deli ham, mm-hmm. it's thinly sliced, put on a club. That's great, but yeah, I certainly prefer that over a chunk of ham. Yeah, but alternating between the ham and the turkey definitely helps the turkey prospects. One thing that um, really pisses me off about the Thanksgiving dinner are the people that make gravy. Mm-hmm. And then they just discard all of the delicious turkey drippings and shit and not incorporate it into the gravy you're, you're in some peop- way. You know, people who aren't making, who aren't using the turkey drippings for their gravy? Yeah. Or are they just like grabbing a can of gravy off of the, yeah. some, hor- some Hormels? Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh. A lot of them are grabbing a packet. Oh. Mixing it with water. Like a oh. fucking heathen. So much better. Ways. It, even, 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 here's the thing. Take your can of gravy, take your jar of gravy, whatever. Take your packet, even, of gravy. Just put the turkey drippings into it and mix it up. Yeah. And it's gonna be better. Oh, yeah. That's, like, literally how that works. Meat juice. Yeah. Meat juice makes most things better. Now, are you a fan of when you take the mashed potatoes, you put them on the plate, right? Mm -hmm. Do you dig a little well with the spoon and then pour the gravy in, or you just go lump and then gravy over everything? I do like gravy over everything. So, how how I arrange my plate. Okay. So you got you got the the third that's dedicated to the turkey because it takes up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. You got it's the main thing. You got to get your protein in. Absolutely. The other the next third is dedicated mostly to the taters, but also the stuffing kind of drips into the sure. to that area as well. And now those three tend to take up most of the plate, and gravy goes on all of them. Yeah, gravy goes all over all three of them. I will then find a little, a nice little cavity to take a, f- a fat, healthy scoop of the green beans. I find a nice little cavity to politely take a scoop of uh, the sweet potatoes. Mm. I feel obligated to. And then there's usually something weird. Like there's always that weird side that you're not really expecting. There's, I mean, there's the one you expect that's weird, which is the cranberry. Yeah, I don't do the cranberry. I might, I, I might don't take like it. a single cranberry and put it on a piece of stuffing just to like as a little palate cleanser in mm. the middle of the meal. But that's kind of it. See, if there was something, because it's it's a weird Jello thing basically, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, if there's something that goes on or went with, that would make sense. But I don't really want Jello in the middle of my Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Oh my God. My one of one of my coworkers, he was talking about how he grew. He's like a boomer. Mm-hmm. He grew up with his aunt making fucking lime Jello with shredded carrots. I've heard of things like inside this. of it. It sounds. For the Thanksgiving. Horrible. Yeah, yeah. I am familiar with the lime jello that is made like in a pie dish and then topped with not whipped cream. No, no. Mayonnaise. Oh. Mayonnaise. I was going to make a joke about flogged cream instead of it being whipped, but no No, no. mayonnaise. No, mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. I love a mayonnaise. I don't want it on lime jello. I'm... I don't know. I don't know where the fuck these people get off behaving this way. If I'm being completely honest with you, it was there was that weird time in American history where people just decided that everything was that was a salad was now made with Jello instead of lettuce. I'm more okay with the salad. Everything is a salad is made with mayo instead of lettuce. But still, I love an American based potato salad, an American based pasta salad, an egg salad, an egg salad. Sure, why not? But Jello based salads, no. no. No, that's some br- that that uh, okay. This is this is my one prejudice moment. This is some lobster back shit. This is some British shit. If I've ever, are you familiar with the jellied eels? I'm. I don't think I'm familiar with the jellied eels now. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. That's. I don't want to talk about the. Okay, okay. We're already getting off the rails here. I do want to shout out uh, the mac and cheese as well. Mm, I I used to love a mac and cheese. I can't eat it anymore. Yeah, but yeah, um, definitely a highlight. One of one of my friends, Michaela, make makes magic on on tiktok she's a cosplayer uh she thinks that it is abhorrent that the mac and cheese appear at the thanksgiving meal to begin with to which myself and all of my coworkers and everyone that was around was like why yeah that's weird yeah i agree i mean it doesn't like a like a, a box of blue uh, a, a, 
a blue box craft. Like, sure. okay, that's a little weird. But, like, you, there's plenty of you can do with a mac and cheese a... that makes that fits the meal perfectly. No, she was talking, like, a regular, like, lasagna pan of mac and cheese with, like, a breadcrumb topping. See, that sounds delicious. I, it sounds phenomenal. Like, I would eat that by itself. Yeah. Right now, actually. <laughs> I would devour that immediately without even thinking about it. So... Yeah, again, this is the Duels and Mana Dorks <laughs> podcast, which is ostensibly a D&D and MTG podcast. And before we get into our, our spiels and get into the regular goings-on of the show, uh, we want to shout out our actual sponsor of the podcast, Instaved. Instaved.com is wonderful a little Australian company. They want to promote their product, the D20 staff of Critical Hits, which we have. If you're watching the live stream, it's right here. It's very cool. Comes in like six segments. They screw together. You get a little end cap and you get these uh, delicious D20 shaped uh, toppers. So you can feel like a little magical wizard. Mm -hmm. uh, the 20 side's always facing up. Always critical hit. It's a D20 staff of critical hits. Um, we did a little sponsored post for them on our TikTok and we ended up putting that on like all of the things. All of the kind of went Kind of went hard on YouTube, which I was kind of surprised by, but you know. We love that. Um, the Instave guys have been super patient with us because we've been kind of horrible, <laughs> and we appreciate that greatly. Uh, their product is very, very well made. It looks great. feels good. The cat loves playing with it. Absolutely. I will say she is a big fan of, uh, of the staff, and very Apple-esque in its packaging. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the box it came in was pretty heavy duty it weighed more than the staff itself each, oh yeah each segment uh came with two of these toppers one of red and black and one black and gray or gray and black yeah um gray with black numbering yes and this one's black with red and numbering mm -hmm. uh yeah but yeah nice little wall hanger uh we need to find a spot in in the studio to put it and by the studio i mean sam's office yes which is also the spare bedroom yes so i'm sorry i hit the mic live stream that was that was my bad but yeah uh Shout out to Instaved with the Deluxe D20 staff of Critical Hits. You can go to instaved.com if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. It's the pinned video if you want to see it up close and in person on uh, on the on our TikTok. And let them know the gender bro sent you. And if you come over here, uh, you can lick it. Yeah, you can lick it. Jester licks it a lot. She fucking loves this thing. It's pretty great. She goes, she goes ham for the Instaved Deluxe D20 staff of Critical Hits. Also, uh, the girl I've been seeing showed that video to her mother. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, a uh, little new segment we're going to add here at the top of the podcast. Sam, what have you been playing? What's been going on? This is going to be, we're going to talk about what we've been playing in the realm of, in the realm of D&D, uh, Magic the Gathering, in terms of decks we've been working on recently, things we've been playing, vibing with, jiving with, obviously video games, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So what's been going on? What have you been playing? Well, let's see. Um, as of recent... Well, uh, uh, yesterday on our live stream, we did uh, some limited. Mm -hmm. We did some sealed constructed uh, from our pre-release kits. Yep, pre-release of Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Yeah. You were doing a little... Uh, a little Selesnia creature beat down. Mm -hmm. And I was doing I was doing some Orzhov sacrifice shenanigans. Uh, you ended up winning two to one. Yes. A little yeah. best of three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, video games, I've been playing uh, the 2016 The Talos Project. Going back to 2016, man. Yeah. So it, they well, they just released uh, earlier this month The Talos Project 2. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so my, our buddy Andy and I were talking about it. We uh, you know like some puzzle games. It has a very Portal-esque meets... Um, it's Portal without the portals. You know, yeah. other sorts yeah. of, of pretty simple... Uh, uh, spatial reasoning puzzles. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's it's been fun. It's been frustrating at times, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So play that. Uh, kind of look into play the second one. Probably not immediately. Mm. Um, other than that, uh, I was running a uh, um, a non D and D game that I was thinking about recently. We've played one. Uh, it's Monster of the Week. Mm. We're, we're gonna do a Monster of the Week game. We played once early October. Oh, uh, before October. Wow. Uh, but then, you know, October and November kind of get busy. Yeah. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to start run, run our second session of that. That'd be good. Uh, I have I've not been playing any D&D &D for a while, which is unfortunate. Yeah. I really want to get back into hosting D&D &D at the house. We and had quite a bit of D&D &D going on a year ago, year yeah, and a half like ago. Regularly, too. And it's... 
it sucks because we have like a nice table, we have a good setup, like we have all the stuff that makes D and D hosting easy. It's just adult scheduling mm-hmm. is really, really not good. Yeah, and figure and finding someone that's willing to consistently run a game, like so many. I mean, my games, my game that I've run has died multiple times. Yeah, yours has, Darren's has. Like it's just, it's tough. It's really tough, which is a shame. My work game right now is in a big lull, too, because of the holidays and yeah. all that. Everyone's very busy. Um, I'm wanting to run, like, a little little short-run thing of... A couple uh, session. A couple session, like, a little vampire in a Strahd, Markov wedding-style vibe mm. thing. Mm-hmm. It'll be pretty cool. Uh, in MTG, I've I built up a uh, new Oathbreaker deck Mm -hmm. with Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Played it for the very first time on the live last night after we did our little sealed constructed with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. A little bit of a slow burn. I think Sam took it a little bit easy on me. I should have I should have taken out Teferi when I when Mm -hmm. I attacked that one time but well well. I would have I would have been able to I think I would have been able to block enough you, I mean, you would have been able to block enough to not kill him. Yeah. But I don't know if you could have gotten up to his ultimate. Yes. That turn. Which um, is, which is the, it was a board, it's a board wipe that, for me, a targeted board wipe. A targeted board wipe for a single player. Which in a four player game, not as useful, but still very useful. Particularly when I'm running, I'm running to, okay, so Teferi Temporal Pilgrim gets a loyalty counter whenever you draw a card. He has a zero ability to draw a card, which nets him one loyalty. He has a minus two to create a 2-2 spirit token with vigilance that gets a plus one, plus one counter every time you draw a card. So the idea here is he's five mana, and then his signature spell is Brainstorm, which is a one mana draw three, put two back on the top spell. And so the idea, get six mana available, cast him minus two him to get the token and then immediately brainstorm to draw three which nets him one loyalty and then gives me a five five vigilant body immediately um and that would tap me out and ideally before doing that getting out some of my value creatures uh tower in the sky summoner like a triska decophile Mm -hmm. maybe get like the wizard class get some mana rocks that kind of stuff and then just have repeatable card draw with brainstorm uh, being able to draw into things like Lady uh, uh, Azami. Azami of Scrolls, which will let me tap all my creatures to draw a card, or all my wizards to draw cards. And basically, um, his win condition is either getting the tokens out and getting massive bodies that just are impossible to get through and then just beat everyone down. I mean, I had a body that was a 23-23 with a Vigilance. Yeah. At one point. At the end of it, yeah. Um. Or draw into something like Triska Decophile and manipulating my hand so that I have 13 cards in my hand on my upkeep to automatically win. I also have Laboratory Maniac, which if I deck myself and I go to draw a card, then I win. Mm -hmm. Uh, That sort of a thing. And for a first time go, not too shabby. No. Not too shabby. I like the way it runs. I definitely, I just went with the first hand that I got because I didn't, I I was like, I I kind of like, it's got some card draw in it. I'm sure I'll pull into something. It had three lands. I was good, um, but I really think in the future getting like a, a three or less mana value permanent in the mm-hmm. opening hand I think is pretty key. Yeah, particularly a mana rock of some kind. Uh, in video games, I've been playing Minecraft a lot at work. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I want to go back and actually play the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, especially because Rebirth's coming out soon, so it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Anyway, we've rambled on. Long enough. Jesus Christ. 20 minutes. Wow. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. <laughs> We're thankful for you listening to our bullshit. But the Duels of Man of Dorks podcast goes live every other week on Wednesdays. We record live on TikTok the Tuesday before. You can get it on Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, on our YouTube channel as well. We also have a TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, X, Discord, all that kind of stuff. Monday Night Magic live streams where we play Magic every Monday night. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the TikTok. And we do pack openings when new sets come out, like with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Upcoming releases. Uh, we talked re- uh, recently about the Book of Many Things being delayed. It has come out digitally on Halloween. Uh, we are still waiting on the physical release of the Books of Many Things. We also have some rough release windows for the upcoming Magic the Gathering sets. We do know uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan just came out. Uh, Ravnica remastered on January 12th. Murder at Karlov Manor on my birthday, February 9th. 
the Fallout Commander decks on March 8th, 2024. Uh, Q2, we have Outlaws of Thunder Junction as well as Modern Horizons 3. We get Assassin's Creed set in July. And then Quarter 3, we get the Bloomborough set and Duskmorn in Quarter 4. So... You're saying that uh, we're, there is no December release for MTG, and that's kind of relieving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of product. Um, obviously, we don't have to interact with it all, but man, it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, and there's also like all the secret layers and shit that are happening. Like, I was gonna add that to the news. It's just like there's so much. There's Laura Croft. There's more Jurassic Park. There's there's just so much. Yeah, so so much. So that's probably what they're. Do it for December. Obviously, I'm Christmas gonna... time. Oh, let's get an MTG gift. Let's get secret layers. So we're going to release a lot of secret layers. Except the problem is the secret layers. So I ordered uh, two that dropped in October. The Creep Show and the um, Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. They don't ship until mid-December. Oh, right on. So, yay. Rip. <laughs> so, like, yeah. If you Just remember that in the future. If you want to buy a secret layer drop for uh, one of your, your nerdy friends who loves Magic the Gathering... Do it in October. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's man. The see, I don't know. I don't know how a company like Wizards of the Coast that has been doing this for so long is so bad with distribution timelines for premium products. I mean, they're bad about a lot of things. If we uh, if we segue right into our okay, well, I'm, here's okay. Here's the deal. top story right now. Wizards of the Coast has responded to some Twitter controversy, which turns out to be like actual controversy. With uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, one of their artists that they hired for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, his name is David Sondard. Uh, he did two pieces of art for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan for the Explore card, as well as uh, Wayfarer's Bobble. These are for the Commander decks. Yes. Uh, he has done 13 pieces overall for Magic the Gathering, so he's not some prolific artist. Uh, he's, he's, he's relatively new on the scene in the realm of Magic the Gathering. But we... Uh, we got a tweet from someone whose name is Lorenzo Lanfranconi, who is an artist, uh, not for Wizards of the Coast. They tweeted at Wizards Magic, quote, just wanted to let you know one of your artists stole one of my paintings to paste it as it is in the background of their illustration. I don't even want to know the reason behind this. It's so stupid that it deserves a prize, LOL. Showing a picture of Wayfarer's Bobble and one of her paintings. Uh, her painting is like a, like a, it just says a, a house with a staircase and a lady walking down it, and there's some foliage and shit. Which it's a if, lovely painting. It's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful piece of art. Which if you flip it, uh, mirror it. Oh god, if you mirror it, and then put a character in the foreground, and remove the character walking down the stairs, you have Wayfarer's bobble. Mm-hmm. And there's some great gifts that are showing it, like, wiping between the two, and it's, like, identical. So, David has not made any comment himself. Wizards of the Coast, on the other hand, did an official post on their website saying, quote, Such misuse of art is expressly prohibited by our artist guidelines and does not reflect the values of Wizards of the Coast. As such, we will be suspending any future work with David Saundard until further notice. Uh, the original artist, Lorenzo Lanfranconi, went on to say she got an update that the artist, uh, David, wrote to her and to Wizards of the Coast. Uh, she's not going to pursue anything more than simply sharing this image. And to her, if this was the only case of this to happen, it's okay. Just a weird situation and a stupid mistake. Elaborating, probably overworked to this, so I would just say continue making your art, but without pasting slash painting over stuff taken from other people's works. So she is approaching the... she For one, I believe this is a she. That would be really awkward if it isn't. It's a he. Lorenzo is traditionally... Uh, we, we don't know. Uh, uh, we don't know. They, we don't know. They don't list their... We don't... Yeah. Li- they don't list their pronouns in their uh, Twitter thing. Anyway. Sorry. X. I hate... I hate... Twitter is fine. It's fine. Uh, I mean, even... Look, hold on. In, the, in this po- in this story, it even says... He. On his... Oh, yeah. He on his official X. Formerly Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Everywhere that puts X. This is now a rant about Twitter changing its name, even though that's month, you know, months in the past. Yeah. Everywhere it says X, formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. But so it's formerly known as Prince. So Lorenzo does not want to pursue any sort of legal action against Wizards, which I think is perfectly, it would have been perfectly fine. Uh, there was a previous controversy in 2021 of a similar 
incident where an artist took uh, fan art of Nico Bolas uh, and then took from deviant art fan art from deviant art and then took the head and the arm of Nico Bolas and then had to redo the body themselves yeah. so the body doesn't line up but the head and the arm do and it's like well if they're going to redo the body why not do the whole thing it's like oh why didn't they just steal the whole thing? Oh, because there's a deviant art watermark over right, the torso. That would be right across the torso. So they would have to redo the whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um, so, Wizards of the Coast embroiled constantly in controversy, it seems. Um, they cannot seem to get uh, out of it. Yeah, which, to be fair. To be fair. I, 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 don't, I don't like defending corporations here. No. Because they're corporations. They should... They need to get their shit together. They need to get their act together. But they contracted out an artist. They had guidelines for the artist that that expressly prohibit plagiarism. Mm -hmm. The artist did it. They got caught. And Wizards is no longer working with them. I don't think WotC did anything wrong. Do they need to have better screening for their art? A lot of people have been saying that. I am of the mind, how do you screen for this? Yeah. You reverse Google image search Wayfarer's Bobble, that Wayfarer's Bobble art. You're not going to get that painting that the artist is referencing. With the amount of uh, modifications that have been made to it. The modifications, the foreground elements, uh, they changed the skybox. So the background behind the foliage of the house is uh, Ixalan. Mm Mm-hmm. To me, the more important question, uh, more that like, I, Wizards didn't do anything wrong, in my mind. They hand they they hired an artist. The artist did something of their own volition. Whatever their reasons were, we'll get into that. Whatever their reasons were, mm-hmm. Watsy found out. They investigated. They're no longer working with them. They handled it about as good as they possibly could have. Yeah, and I don't I don't see that as a problem. Now, what Lorenzo brings up is the interesting part of this bringing up the idea that it's a case of being overworked. So at the top of the story, we mentioned Lorenzo had did two pieces of art for the lost caverns of Ixalan. David, 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 sorry, sorry. Lorenzo did no work. David Saunders did two pieces of art for the lost caverns of Ixalan, Wayfarer's Bobble and Explore. If you look at the Explore art, it is every other Explore art that you've ever seen in your entire life of, a fucking coastline and some waves and land and like a guy, yeah, just hanging out on the coast. He's a dude, so being a guy. Obviously, art art is work. Art requires a lot of training, a lot of expertise, but it is not some massively complex piece of art featuring characters and unique character designs and details. Like, no, it's very watercolor, which is part of the aesthetic. You know, it's mm-hmm. totally fine. Wayfarer's Bobble is the one that's more complicated. It has a character, it has an object, it has like magical effects around it, it has background, and then it has plagiarized work as well. <laughs> and also plagiarized work. Plagiarized work. Um, from what I've been able to see cursorily online, Wizard Watsi tends to pay like in the realm of like thousand or thousands of dollars per piece of art mm-hmm. for cards. So let's assume he got paid two thousand dollars for his two pieces of art. Mm-hmm. That is enough money for most people. Obviously, if you live in, in, in an expensive place, like that work there is enough to pay for a month. Yeah, I live. will. Yeah, I will say most a lot of corporate jobs. The average, the average salary for a corporate job is going to be around there for somebody in their first five to uh, four to five years of yeah. working at a corporate yeah. job. So then gets into the how much time did he get? Yeah, we got to assume that. You know, they have the artists, you know, commissioned all the all your contracted by the time they announce it to us, the consumer, mm-hmm. which they announced it, what, several months ago? Yeah. Yeah. They announced they announced Lost Caverns of Ixalan over the at Gen Con, I believe. Before Gen Con. Before Gen Con. Yeah. Because. Yeah, yeah. They revealed a lot of stuff at Gen Con they for revealed, Lost Caverns. Yeah. They did. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, they already had some art. So they had already been hiring artists by the beginning of august yeah so and of course we can't you know we can't fully know exactly what the timeline is. what the timeline was and we can't know what david was or any of these other artists are doing because obviously they're like we said they're on contract Mm. so they're not they're not 
They're not employees. Only doing this. They're yeah. not only working on art for Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. The Wizards commissioned them, effectively. So you gotta, So if they're overworking themselves, if they're being overworked, it's because they're taking on more than they can mm-hmm. with other contracts. So this could totally be a situation of, oh my gosh, these commander decks are coming out in like a week. We need art for Wayfarer's Bobble and Explore. They're going to print in a week. And we need art for Wayfarer's Bobble and Explore. David, we're giving you $2,000. You have two days. All right, that's tough. That's probably. tough. That's a, okay, that's probably the worst case scenario. Yeah. For wi- for wizards in this little PR situation. Uh, almost assuredly, that's not what happened. But okay. let's assume that it was. Let's assume that it was. If it is... Then <laughs> you still get two days to do two pieces of art. That still doesn't excuse stealing someone else's art just to meet a deadline. What that means is the quality of your art goes down. Hmm. And if Wizards is displeased with that, that's their fault. Yeah. Not yours. That being said. They paid, they paid you for art to be delivered by a date. There might be a quality clause in there, but you can only meet a certain level of quality in a certain time frame. Mm-hmm. And I would be more okay with breaching that part of that contract than uh, the artist guidelines and no plagiarizing part, personally. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, if, if it's always hard to say. Without knowing more, and we probably won't know more at the you know from here on out. Yeah, it sounds like you know it sounds like all the parties involved don't want to, don't care. You know, we've we've moved on. We've we, got we've we've punished the people who need to be punished. We said we've start, but wizard wizards made their post, and now they're gonna not want to talk about it. I mean, it's also fair because yeah. they have millions of other things to deal with. And uh, in my estimation, they don't they really didn't do much wrong. They hired a person. Yeah, a person. Who they've worked with before. Who they worked with before that had done art with them. I'm sure people are going to be scouring through his other artworks just to see now. Well, it's also going to be interesting because um, his other, a lot of his other art came from the uh, Warhammer mm-hmm. sets. Mm-hmm. And then he has a couple of full art um, lands that I was seeing. Oh. So if you can look up uh, by artist on things like Scryfall and other apps, and that's what we were doing beforehand. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. It's, it's tough. Um, one, la- one last thing that I will say. When it comes to plagiarizing in general, don't do it. It's like when, the first thing they teach you in elementary school. Yeah, uh, especially now where it's very easy to get caught. Also, the people that are plagiarizing, if you look at this art, he had to inverse it. He had to change the colors on it to match the art style. He had to put filters over it. He had to cut it out. He had to remove a character from it and then replace it. All for one part of the background. He changed the entire skybox to fit Ixalan. And then he put an entire character in front of it. It's like, it's less than a third of the image. And it's a background piece. He didn't have to do this. The amount of work that he put in to cut it out put it in and then hide try to hide the fact that he stole it if he had put that effort into just drawing a basic ass forest behind them Mm -hmm. behind that character it would have been fine and guess what uh if this character it just has woods behind him with ixalan in the skybox in the background well it doesn't change anything exactly the fucking same i'm sorry like on the, on the table for Wizards of the Coast, like it's the same. Yeah. So I don't know why he even chose to do this. It, short of Watsy giving him like, all right, you we're, we've given we've we've wired you two thousand dollars. If you don't give us two pieces of art in the next five hours, we're sending the fucking Pinkertons to kill you. We're gonna eat your dog. Yeah. Like short of that, I don't see why he would even try to do that. It's more work than it's worth, and it's obviously wrong. So, don't play dress, kids. Don't play dress. Got anything fun in the TikTok live chat about this? Uh, we got some stuff that looks like we can uh, answer. Um, 
at the end of the podcast. So anybody wants to ask a question, feel free. Um, yes, we record the podcast live every other week on TikTok. We'd like to check in just to see if there's anything topical to what we're talking about so we can answer it in the moment instead of waiting to the end. Next story, though, um, this is another Wizards of the Coast controversy surrounding Magic the Gathering. And this one, I think, is a lot more dumb. But that's just my opinion. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is accused of using AI art again. So we previously talked about the controversy with AI art in uh, Bigby Presents the Glory of the Giants, yep. where an artist was using AI art to create a giant. There was also, I believe, a card uh, previewed for mm-hmm. magic for uh, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan that people were saying was also AI generated. Yeah. One of the brontosauruses or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we now have uh, this time... <laughs> They were talking about the art for uh, the Tomb Raider Magic the Gathering Secret Lair release. Uh, and it was a little a little Twitter post from at MTG Secret Lair. And it showed some of the art that is going to be featured in uh, the Magic the Gathering set, which is not AI generated. The art is art. Yeah. That was commissioned from an artist. What people are complaining about is this promotional tweet that uses uh an image of like an old tv on a desk with like just a generic a generic tweet generic ass background ass background and it has three it has two pieces of art taped on the wall and one piece of art in the tv and people are upset that the background and the tv frame itself and that stuff is ai generated so the tweet has since been deleted possibly confirming that it was AI generated. Mm -hmm. So what happened with Bigby presents presents the glory of the giants is different than this by like a lot. What happened with the lost caverns of Ixalan art being AI generated is different than this by like a lot. This is a Twitter post. They're not denying an artist money. They would just have an intern throw something together. Yeah. And what they had here was probably an intern throwing something together for their Twitter account or a, a base level social media person throwing something something together for their Twitter account. I also don't think it's morally wrong or ethically wrong to use AI to generate generic backgrounds hmm. for posts. The art it's, the art itself is artist art and they're promoting like commissioned art. I get that these AI image models are being trained on real life art and artists that exist. But at the same time, it's a fucking wood paneling wall with a TV and some controllers in front of it. It's got to feel pretty bad for the, for the team that built this AI that came up with it. And then they're like, wow, guys, look at this awesome thing we presented. I mean, we've talked, we talked about this, God, a year ago when this first started coming up Mm -hmm. where it's like, these people were probably pretty proud and pretty excited. And then they're like, Oh, now we're getting shit on. Yeah. People like, people like shitting on things that are new and the hot topic. Oh yeah. Right now. I even remember a year ago when everybody was going bananas for that. uh, It was an AI that you inputted, like five Im- images of yourself and then would produce you a bunch of like portraits of you being in different roles. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that was still paid. Like people were shelling out, I think it was like 25 bucks for a set of these, uh, of these portraits of you being a knight or you being a astronaut or whatever. I can just do that. I can just do that. Yeah. I, people are, people like paying money to be early adopters for technology. Um, I see no controversy here. They, they used an AI to generate some background art for a Twitter post to promote their product. It's literally only being used for this post. And not even that anymore. And not even that because they <laughs> deleted it. Uh, I feel sorry for the social media person because I don't think they did anything wrong and I'm sure they got in trouble or fired. So sorry about that. But people need to... Keep your powder dry, is what I like to say. Keep your powder dry. I've mm. said this a lot. That's... This specific phrase of keeping your powder dry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, you know, like just in Pirates of the Caribbean, where yeah. they all have that standoff, and they're click, click, oh, well, what keep, powder? Keep your powder dry. Because if you're just firing off constantly for every little thing, 
people aren't going to care very this is this is the this is the 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 boy who cried wolf we don't need to fire off about every little thing did they use ai to generate a promotional image for magic the gathering product on their twitter page yeah uh didn't hurt anybody didn't take away anyone's jobs isn't bad if you don't like that ai is a thing um sorry sorry get used to it because that's what's going to happen whether you like it or not i don't necessarily like it mm -hmm. but it's a fact of reality and we're not we can't get our our panties in a twist every time this kind of shit comes up obviously oh we hired an artist to make a piece of art and then they used ai to generate a giant for us for our giant book that's not cool, but that's not Watsy. That's an artist. Also, in reference to this specific image that we're looking at, the the, the background, um, like you said, it's not taking. Well, they they have their graphic designers. We know, like they're making. They have graphic designers making plenty of things. They probably are like overworked as well. Yeah, because their graphic designers often are. I used to, you know, I, I've known several. Um, we, we we have a we have a friend in our Discord who is a graphic designer. She does our uh, logo. She made our logo. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's been one of the things we have to be like, hey, we're we're looking to do a project. Do you have capacity? And she's like, no, not this month. Let me get back to you in like two months. Yeah, and uh, so you know, I I'm sure eventually in the future there will be positions that are you are a graphic designer hired to work with the AI to generate stuff for this company specific. Like, yeah. that'll probably be a position in the future. Yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing. No, te technology is going to keep progressing and th this jobs, the job scene is going to evolve. It's yes. it's going to change what it looks like. Yeah. I'm, I feel really bad for all the, the, um, the horse stables and horse carriages companies and stuff when the car came around, you know, we really miss them. This is oh, that's that's so mean, but like, this is this is how life happens. Everyone freaks out that their industry is going away, or something's going to die, or it's going to be awful. And sometimes it does, but other opportunities always present themselves. You just need to be flexible and fucking calm down a little bit. There's a uh, there's a there's a uh, radio storytelling podcast I used to listen to, um, and one of the one of the settings was on Mars in the future. And at one point, they had uh, a group of like small-time villains that were, uh, you know, the the scenes the scene came down, and the the good guy was finally like, "You don't really want to be criminals. What do you want to do?" And they want, and one guy was like, "I want to be an art artisanal coder." <laughs> like, it's the future now. All code is written by machines, and he's like, "I want to make custom handwritten code." <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> and here's the thing: that's going to be a selling point for oh, products yeah. in the future. It's it's handmade with no AI. Yeah, and that's also fine. But I, I like I like to think of uh, the video game industry because there's a lot of controversy because a lot of these developers be like, yeah, we're using AI tools now. Um, rather than having an artist spend weeks working on making like hundreds of different uh, tree models for a forest in a video game, why not have an AI do that? Mm-hmm. And then you can have your artists do things like character models and faces and like animation and cutscenes and let them work on things that are more important and impactful. And then like the menial shit that's just repetitive can just be generated, textures generated, mm -hmm. uh, backgrounds for social media posts generated. No, the the wood paneling and the TV aren't the important part of the post. No. They're set dressing to present the art. And what's what's really ironic is, uh, I don't know if ironic is the right word, but if we just pulled these three images from the cards out and just like line them up, gave a slap, you know, put them at a jaunty angle, and then that was the entire post, no one would have an issue. Yeah. Because nothing happened besides you put a couple, you know, you, you put some dividing lines. They, in. they dressed it up different. That's, That's all, all it is. People need to calm down. Anyway, I have nothing more to say about this. It's, All right. I'm kind of done talking about AI art <laughs> in oh, a lot of instances. Oh, I'm sure we'll talk about it more oh, yeah. in the future. Forever. Let's talk about something not controversial. Yeah. Um, the Dungeons & Dragons television channel, Dungeons & Dragons Adventures, has launched, and it's got three shows on it. We know them already. It is Purple Worm, 
Faster, Faster Purple Worm, Kill Kill, Encounter Party, and Heroes Feast. And they've all launched, they've premiered, and uh, apparently they're pretty all right, I guess. Uh, we know that Heroes Feast is just a D&D cooking show. Um, the Encounter Party is run by, oh gosh, Encounter Party, uh, the Dungeon Master David Judkins is leading a cast including Ned, Do- uh, Ned Donovan, David Lee Hyun, Landry Fleming, Sarah Babe, Kari Payton, and Andrew Krug uh, in a 22-episode long-format, hour-long episode uh, campaign, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's just a D&D campaign. Yep. Uh, faster Purple Worm Kill Kill is much more interesting. It's run by Matthew Lilliard, who is uh, the owner of Beetle and Grimm, also Shaggy. From the live action Scooby Doo. Live action Scooby Doo. Matthew Lilliard is the man. He also makes whiskey now. So that's yeah, pretty, that's right. That's pretty cool. And he is the he is the host. He's the creator. He is one of the many DMs. It's a rotating cast on Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill. The whole idea is they take a powerful monster and they feature it, and the DM runs it, and they play it against a bunch of level one characters with the expectation that they all die because mm-hmm. they will all die. There's no battle map. It is done in front of a live audience, and it's just fucking funny. It we we took we looked at a clip of it and it or the trailer, and it looks a lot like a late night TV show, except yeah. except D and D. Yeah, and th- that's it's just a fun little presentation. It's different than every other live play. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, uh, it's. If you're into that sort of thing, you can watch it for free on Amazon's Freevee as well as on Plex TV. Uh, I'm a big fan of Plex. Mm. Personally, I used to have a Plex server, and then my computer died. That's right. So if I were to set it up, which I might, it's pretty great. It's a great media sharing thing. You might want to look at another one. So it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But you can watch it for free on uh, Plex's uh, channels. So these started premiering on uh, the 17th. So last week. So last week, they've been going for a while. It's a 24-hour channel. We've talked about this before. Yes. It is largely led with legacy content, uh, specifically the 80s animated cartoon, as well as uh, other popular actual plays, such as Rivals of Waterdeep, High Rollers, and Desi Quest. And that is the bulk of their content right now, with the the prime spots being left for these three shows. So, how are they going to make fucking money on this? Right. Where's where's the funding coming from, and is this a venture that's worth taking? Obviously, Freebie and uh, Plex, they're, they're taking advantage of the situation where people are really fed up with cable companies and television streaming. Uh, they're fed up with streaming services charging yeah. a lot more and cracking down on how easy it is to access their content. It's a whole thing. So having these options is nice. They can run ads on it mm-hmm. 24 hours a day. I, I question how much money this endeavor is going to make. Uh, also, I question why are they not approaching people like the Dungeon Bros for the Duels and Mana Dorks podcast? <laughs> we will happily make a video podcast specifically to air on Dungeons and Dragons Adventures. I don't, they would never work with us because we talk so much shit about WotC. I, I mean, you know. I kind of like that. Maybe WotC needs some shit talked about them. I agree. I agree. Honestly, I kind of like I kind of like it. I kind of like not being tethered in a way. Right? You know? I mean, we could reach out to Matthew Lilly and be like, hey, man. Hey, man we don't up? know you at all. We don't know you at all. What's up? <laughs> we're nobody. <laughs> but anyway, so this, this 24-hour streaming, yeah, how is it going to make money is the good question. And the second question that I'm a little focused on is... Is this worth watching? Yeah, because obviously, um, the Ma- Matthew Lillard's the the faster purple worm kill kill is unique, uh, and it looks like you know it's you know going to be better than anybody's streamed game on Discord. Oh yeah, um, not sure about Encounter Party. Encounter Party, I think, is going to be a higher production. It seems like it's a higher production value actual play than most actual plays that you see online That's as well. Fair. Um, and then the cooking show, like you were mentioning earlier, pretty easy to do. Yeah, I work. I, I used to work in college at a public broadcasting station in the United States, and we had a, a cooking show that we would put on, and we recorded it in our studio. Uh, we were all college students producing it. Well, 
actual like executing on the production of it it was produced by a guy who was like an actual producer and then actual talent and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um but like we shot it we did the live production we edited it like it was all our thing and it's not that difficult <laughs> like most stu- like most in studio like local television studio style stuff which is what this is mm-hmm. a zhuzhed up version of that i'm sure but that's all that it is and i'm sure they're going to be upping the production value getting close ups getting like fancy shots all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day it's a cooking show yeah not super difficult to pull off um, I like that they're doing it, and I like that they're making it D and D themed with their cookbook and stuff. And it's just a different offering, other than oh, here's the '80s cartoon, and then a whole bunch of actual plays of varying types and styles. Yeah, that could. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that would definitely be just boring right off the bat. But I'm, but yeah. So is this? Yeah, you, is this worth watching? Are people gonna t- tune in twice a week just to watch the Prime? I'm not gonna lie. I hope that it works out for them because I like that they're doing freebie. I like that they're doing Plex. I like that you don't have to pay for it. Uh, if it can be completely ad supported or subsidized by Watsi or other companies, then fucking more power to them. I'm sure Beetle and Grimm is providing capital Probably, for this yeah. as well. I'm sure several other companies are. Um, I love that they have rotating casts. Uh, very, <laughs> I could see them in the future doing like, more uh like dropout tv style like uh um actually yeah different improv game stuff, shows game and... show style stuff or even like going like old mtv and doing like uh pimp my D D game no, no well i mean that'd be hilarious <laughs> or like pimp my setup and then they like fancy up someone's game room mm-hmm. or some shit like that would be funny they bring joe manganello in and he's like all right all right guys here's what we're gonna do here's what we're gonna do i he would hate that i feel like I feel like he might like that. He might I mean, like that, but he's he, got so much going on. Have you seen his? His well, yeah, but have you seen his crib? His his, his setup. His setup is nice. His setup is really really nice. But like, oh, I'm trying to think of. Uh... Oh, I can't remember it. It was like they would like watch clips on MTV, and then they'd be like, "Oh my god!" It was like a reaction reaction. Channel. Yeah, I mean, everybody has a reaction channel now, but. If... Should we start a reaction channel? No. Should we start uh, going on to Reddit and getting Am I the Asshole but Dungeons and Dragons themed? I'm not going to be... I've seen that on TikTok. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'm not going to be Sniper Wolf. Not gonna I'm be not sn- going to be not gonna just Sniper Wolf. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. If you know who Sniper Wolf is, then you know. But anyway, that's all I have to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. Good luck to this 24-hour channel. Maybe we'll watch a show. Who knows? Mm, yeah, it's one of those things that's just nice to put on in the background. I think a lot of people are just going to slap it on in the background where they're doing stuff. I can see a bunch of people like using it to watch the 80s Dungeons & Dragons cartoon for the first time. Mm-hmm. And being like, all right, that was cool. I'm going to go back to YouTube. Yeah. I mean, if that if that's what works for them, that's what works for them. The last thing we're going to talk about here is uh, just a quick little wrap-up item from one actor of Hollywood, Chris Pine. Mm-hmm also known as Edgin from the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves film that came out this year. Pretty good movie. Yeah, pretty good movie. We were good I was movie. I was pleasantly surprised by that movie. It's very enjoyable. We had fun watching it. Yeah. Uh, all it is is um, there's been rumors swirling about a possible sequel to Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves and he did a recent interview with Games Radar and he gave like a nice little quote when um, asked as whether or not he would return as Edgin the Bard, Chris Pine said, absolutely. And his full comment being, I've heard some rumors about it, but I don't know anything yet. I feel pretty confident that it may happen. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves 2, guys. <laughs> That's all. If if they were to do one, I hope that they uh, they give Edgin... Some actual, some some D, some five E related bard powers. That way, people can stop just uh, any, just any bard power, really. Right? Honestly, <laughs> like yeah, let them play a little loot and then show. Oh, look, it's inspiration. Yeah, just just something. Anyway, uh, that is all that we have for the news items today. We will now go ahead and check out the TikTok live chat where. We record the podcast every other week on Tuesdays before it goes live on Wednesdays on Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube Music, our YouTube channel. Uh, You can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, got a Discord channel, Monday Night Magic live streams on the TikTok, the whole thing. Sam, 
What do we got? Have we got any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas from yes. the TikTok live chat? We, we have actually several. Um, I can't read this person's name because it is not in English. It is not in... Well, it's in a different. It's, in, it's in a different script. It's a different alphabet. <laughs> yes. Uh, they ask, "What was the last character you played?" Uh, the last character I played was a uh, was a pallid elf ranger known as Ilvar Umavi, a little hunter ranger action, and uh, he was deadly as fuck. <laughs> Currently, still playing him. Technically, we just haven't played in a while. <laughs> yeah. The uh, last one I played was uh, in a Star Wars game. It's a, it's a Torgruda, the equivalent of a pal- Paladin, which is a Guardian in uh, in the Star Wars 5e, which is completely free online, sw5e.com, if you want to play some Star Wars stuff. Uh, it's pretty. It used to, It started out as 5e. It is no longer 5e. Um, all right. Um, Act Chulies, it asks, what's your favorite flavor of baked bean? Original. Hmm. I don't like beans, so none. Uh, bushes. Ooh. Paul asks, what's your favorite deck box? Ooh. Uh, I am... The Game Genix deck boxes I'm a big fan of. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Sidewinder, specifically. Uh, magnets. Flips. Gets out of the way. Holds cards. Feels really nice. I do also want to shout out the Boulder. The Boulder. The Boulder. I believe it is... Oh, what company? What company does the Boulder? Um, Ultra Pro, Ultimate Guard, Ultimate Guard Boulder, designed Big. and engineered in Germany. Oh, right on. But yeah, the Ultimate Guard Boulder is more inexpensive than the Game Genix deck boxes. Uh, and you can huck them at people and give them a concussion. Oh yeah, they they snap together well. They hold cards well. They've gotten like a nice finish on them. Uh, yeah. All right. Also, shout out to shout out to uh, IC Games Designs. IC Games Designs for our custom 3D printed deck boxes. You can check them out on TikTok. IC Games Designs, and they got some delicious 3D printed deck boxes there as well. Highly recommend. The one piece of work <sighs> s- uh, says. You know, the one piece was the friends we made along the way. That's what it's going to be. We there isn't going to be a one piece. Uh, the creator already said no. That that was that would be a dumb idea. There's going to be a thing. I, I don't believe them because there mean, still isn't one. <laughs> well, yeah, no, they just got the crew together. Now it's the second half of One Piece starting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my point exactly. They it took them it took them how many decades and how many thousands of chapters and episodes to get the crew together. Yeah, there's not gonna be a One Piece. Uh, anyway, they they say not ask. They say I cast mac and cheese for two mana. I love I love a mac and cheese. I love a mac and cheese. Deserves a place at the Thanksgiving table, as previously stated. Fuck you, Michaela, my friend, Michaela, who said that you shouldn't have mac and cheese at the Thanksgiving table. The last time I looked at the, <laughs> the last time I looked at the camera for the TikTok live stream, and I said "fuck you," and then someone, I just picked a name randomly. Uh, that live got reported for bullying. It did, yeah. <laughs> we were banned. We were we were, we were on, banned uh, for like a three week. days. Yeah. <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> It was hilarious. It was totally worth it. It was a good bit. Uh, let's see. I am going to uh, 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 just generally say, in, in these live comments, I usually skip on questions of, is this a good commander? Uh, what cards should I put in this deck? What leveling suggestions should I take for this character build? Guys, there's plenty of videos online to take care of all of that. Yeah, We, um, we don't know most commanders. Because we don't know most cards. Because there's a lot of fucking cards. So, and there's more coming out every, every quarter. Every quarter. Every every month, actually. Um, uh, thoughts on people getting away with... Interestingly how they put this. Uh, ben N asked, thoughts on people getting away with proxies in small store tournaments? Hmm. He notes that he doesn't really mind it. So. I, I would say it really depends on what format you're playing. Yeah. If you're playing Pioneer, people are – to people who – I saw this guy on – I don't remember his name. If I would, I would shout him out. But he does Magic the Gathering. He doesn't talk in it. It's just music, and he just acts everything out. It's hilarious. He's like, what Pioneer looks like to people who don't play Pioneer? All right. I will play $1,000 as my land for a turn. I'll tap it to play $750. And then uh, I will cast for free three hundred and fifty dollars. Unless you have a counter, I win the game. Yeah. So like, if you're playing against people who have the cards and are and and are wanting to play against people who have the cards, that's one thing. Um, if you're playing higher level and more powerful games, I 
probably need to follow the... Well, here's the thing. I What I always like to think of, the original dual lands, mm-hmm. they tap for one mana of two colors and they enter untapped. Mm-hmm. Those are hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And for whatever reason, WotC just doesn't want to print... Oh, this can tap for two different colors. They're willing to print Command Tower to death. Yeah. They're willing to print Exotic Orchard to death, Secluded Courtyard. They're not even willing to print to death the... Oh, this enters untapped if you control two or more basics. Mm-hmm. Or if you have more than two, more than one opponent. Like, yeah, the Battle Ball on Land should be in every Commander deck. Absolutely they should. Absolutely they should be in every Commander deck. And you want to know what else? Um, proxy the original Dual Lands. Because they're hundreds and hundreds of dollars each. And they're just a they're just a land that taps for two mana. Yep. It's not even a fucking Gaia's Cradle or a, a Tomb of Yogmoth or any of that shit. Which I also think you should proxy. Cards that they're unwilling to reprint in any meaningful capacity that if you're playing at a certain level, like obviously, if you're just jamming with your friends a game yeah. of commander, proxy don't see all to hell. Proxy all to hell. If you're going to your local game shop and you're playing in a tournament. If the if the tournament organizers are fine with it. If they're fine with it, then it doesn't matter. And if they're not, you know, go find another tournament. And if you're going to a bigger convention, uh, the tournament organizers are going to say you have to have the actual cards. Like, it, if you want to just play the game, proxy to your heart's content. If you're going to an organized event, follow the rules of the event. Yeah. Beyond that, fucking have at it. Who gives a shit? I don't. That being said, we are very casual players. Go to go to Etsy, pay an artist twenty dollars, and order a pack of proxies for all the dual lands, the original dual lands. That's even something I I think I like more than just like, hey, I'm gonna you know get the Kinko's discount on this one. Uh, is is get some special art like? Oh my oh, god, absolutely! I love some cool art. If I'm gonna pro- if I'm gonna proxy shit. I'm probably not going to go to, like, a website and just generate a bunch of proxies. I'm probably, like, asterisk. If I put together my Aragorn the Uniter CEDH deck, I'm probably just going to proxy all the cards. as, mm-hmm. as Like, all the expensive ones, like, just as the original cards. Yeah. And just mark them as proxies. But. But, like, if you can get, like, a, ooh, like, in your, uh, in, we each have a couple of artist prints. Mm-hmm. Those are technically proxies. Yes. Because they don't have Magic the Gathering back. I have a, uh, I have a Rogren crystal that's signed by the artist, and it's an artist print. And uh, it's not a legal card, even though it's the same art for the same card by the artist, mm-hmm. signed by the artist. It doesn't have Magic the Gathering back, so it's not legal. It's a proxy. Uh, also, I technically have a proxy of a Mox Opal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cause, that uh, one was more of a surprise, though. That one was a surprise. Our friend Lincoln had a Mox Opal, thought it was real. It turns out it was a really, really good proxy and spent a lot of money on it. And he only found out when he tried to trade it to someone else for something. Yeah. And that other person was like... Yeah, I think that's a proxy, bud. He's like, what? And then they talked about it, and he's like, oh, shit. Here, Connor, have this proxy. <laughs> I was like, all right, right on. All right, cool. That is in my equipment deck. Oh, Drive By Wee Woo. Oh. From Mystery. One of the one of the top subscribers for the Dungeon Bros TikTok live streams, one Mystery Sniper, Wee Woo. We love mystery. Uh, Thomas Rom Charbon asks, if I want to introduce my friends to D&D, should we do 3.5 or 5? Well, uh, personally, we play 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have, have had friends in great detail explain to me how 3.5 works. And 3.5 works a lot closer to a video game. Yeah. Where if you're standing on a certain train, you have one modifier if you are surprised you have a modifier if you do this you have a modifier it's the game of oh i didn't hit let me add i have more modifiers hold on yeah um in a video game that's great because it just does all the work for you yeah in a in a tabletop game where you have to do all the work uh it is a massive 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 barrier to entry 5e grew at such a rapid rate for a number of reasons One of the biggest ones is that it is easy to learn and play. Yeah. It's still it's still not the easiest out there. No. If you want to take somebody new and introduce them to RPGs in general before you or you know 
even I would even argue D and D is not necessarily the first one. There's ones that you can just pick up and play within twenty minutes. Yeah. But D and if you want to get them into D and D, I think the D and D kind of the scene lasts a little longer. Yeah. Uh, and you're likely to uh, you know you're all your friends are likely to move away or die before you actually finish the campaign. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Um. What was the name of the TV channel for the D&D 24-hour live stream? Dungeons and Dragons Adventure. You can get it on Freebie and Plex. Uh, King Deadpool says love SW5E. Yeah, me too. It's fun. It's it's starting to it started Side note. Sidebar. SW5E is the Star Wars 5th edition, um, which was basically when it very first started, which is when I started playing uh, just a coat of Star Wars over 5th edition. Um, it's completely free. It's independent. And actually the original publisher or the original like creator said, hey, I'm tired of, I'm, I need a break from this. I'm, I'm going to shut down the website. And another company came in and was like, no, 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 we'll support it now. So it's actually changed hands. But there is so much content. Like it's almost, it's getting into that realm of, of like, oh, you need more modifiers? Hold on. Like, oh, hold on, I'm wearing Beskar armor. I'm or, or hold on, my shield has the ability to interlock with the with my partner's shield, so uh, we actually need to add another plus two to our AC. Um, it's super cool, though. It's super fun. Um, I'm not a big Star Wars guy. Canadian Talks with Steven Pod. Uh, says, this is a complete disregard for people's time, LOL. Um, I'm not sure if they're referring to something we just said. I did see a comment earlier where he said he would crush us in Magic the Gathering with his Soren deck. Uh, I ignored it because if you're trying to be fun and flirty with us, that wasn't the way to go, my friend. Yeah. Um, that being said... Crush me with your thighs instead. How about that? Um, that being said, yeah. Thank you for... Uh, I mean, thank you for your comment, but I didn't. I don't know really how to respond to just, I'll crush you at Magic. Okay. We're happy. We are, we are again, very casual players. Yeah. Sure. We guess guess what? Have at it. You win. Well well done. You'll win. Great. Anyway, that's about the end of the thing. So That's uh, that's all the, that's, that's, that's all that's all you got? Oh, uh thank you Joey. I just saw for liking uh, for following us. Oh. Don't couldn't it was it went by fast. No. Anyway. It's a whole it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. We're trying we're trying to do a little resurgence with the TikTok. Get it going again. We'll we'll work on that. Yeah. Uh, we also tried to record on the camera for for podcast shorts. It stopped recording after about forty minutes. Ah, well, I think the battery died. Sometime. I think the battery died because we haven't I haven't charged the camera batteries in a while because we haven't used it. Do be like that. So at least that's what my theory is. It just, like I saw the screen and it said that it stopped recording. I was like, what's up with that? And then it went black. So I don't know if it just turned itself off. Probably just turned itself off. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We're, we want to do some podcast clips for all the various channels. We want to do a whole bunch of things. We'll see if it actually materializes into anything meaningful. We'll have to manifest. Yeah. yeah. Sam, do you have anything you would like to say before we depart? Uh, what are you think? Wait, what are you thankful for? Oh, what am I thankful for? What are you thankful this for? this this Thanksgiving, this American Thanksgiving. Remember, Canadian Thanksgiving is actually in October. Man, uh, fuck the Canadians. Um, this this Thanksgiving, I will be thankful for. God, I'm so bad at showing gratitude. Um, yeah, you are. I really am. I don't know. It seems good. Thankfully, we have a month off from buying uh, Magic: The Gathering stuff. You say you say that, but we're gonna buy starting, stuff for starting on Friday. Okay, so TC. Okay, if you uh, made yeah. it this far into the podcast or into the live stream on TCG Player from Friday until Monday, Black Friday until Cyber Monday, if you have an account with TCG Player, every purchase you make on everything is gonna give you ten percent in store credit back that you can then spend. For future uses. The future. So Lathro Blade of the Elves is going to get some work done on her. Uh, going to be getting some staple upgrades, some new cards that need to go in things. Get some more command towers, some more soul rings, some more arcane signets, some more all that kind of shit. Maybe throw in some sealed product. Who knows? Yeah, you know, you know. You never know. We fuck around with a sealed product. We you know? find out with a sealed product. I am. I might. Uh, you should buy singles. <laughs> I might. I might fuck around with a with a collector booster. You never know. A single one. A single Not a box. Nope. Not a box. No, God, no. Not a box. Not Not enough. Don't have enough money for that. Not a box. Not a box. Maybe a sealed product. 
We'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. Anyway. I mean, for 10% back, we might as well. It's basically free. <laughs> right. It's girl, girl math says it's free. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am thankful for the audience. Oh, yeah. I'm thankful for the people. Thank you, guys. In 2023, we have achieved 40,000 followers on TikTok. We have done over a year's worth of podcast, two years worth of podcasting. Yeah, we've hit two years. Two years worth of podcasting. Our second Gen Con, where we got to hang out with a whole bunch of our internet friends that we made. And we That's- are getting things like real sponsors, <laughs> which is weird. Real sponsor. Real sponsor. Real sponsor. People are sending us stuff. Like, people have sent us stuff. Motherfucker, we got sent. We got sent, like expensive cards from someone getting out of magic because he liked our live stream yeah cool guy really cool guy we love that but i'm thankful for you guys so and with that and with that fucking lame response i'm gonna end the podcast as i always like to end my game nights and say let's blink out of this dragon water birth